Hi and welcome back to my channel. So I've been riding my Knevo SL Expert now for about six months stock and there's a few areas where I feel that Specialized dropped the ball and cut corners um, on areas that should be upgraded. So first of all, the first upgrade which many people do is I put a shorter stem on. I prefer a smaller cockpit and I also prefer a bit more rise from my bars so I also replace the 20 mil um, bars with some 38 mil nuke proof carbon so raising that front and also making it slightly lighter as well so and then we look at where specialized kind of scrimps putting a gx chain on the dropper length of 170 mil on a, on a size an s4 i think is too long the dropper post insertion depth is a real issue on this bike the crank length of 170 mil due to low bottom bracket has a lot of pedal strikes and SRAM entry level code RS brakes aren't up to the job. So first job was to replace the GX chain with the X1. Now because this is an e-bike and I'm doing more miles, the X1 train chain should hopefully last longer and be kinder on my components such as my derailleur, my cassette and, and the, the cranks. I then turned my attention to the seat post. So took off the X-Fusion Manic post, 170 mil. And at the same time, I took off, I believe the shifter, the actuator, should I say, is a um, Shimano affair. So I replaced this with the one-up system. Now, the one-up lever and seat post in 150mm. Now, the one-up is a great seat post because it has a lot better insertion depth, getting that seat out of the way. I then replaced the alloy 170mm cranks with carbon 160mm. Um, these look nicer, they're lighter, and I won't get strikes. I replaced the... RS levers with RSC. So this side has been replaced. This is the RSC. As you can see, there's very little play in the levers. I'm used to Hope levers, which are very nice. Um, I find the RSCs are very similar because these bearings in that pivot point. If you look at the RSs, then there's a lot of movement in that lever, lateral movement. They're very creaky, very squeaky, and not synonymous with a nine and a half thousand pound bike these aren't good enough quality in my view maybe putting these on the entry level sl but on the you know expected the rsc's on on a nine and a half gram bike the rear hub is a dt swiss 370 hub with roval badging it's a ratchet ln so it is upgraded model from three paul however i don't know it's due to the extra power i just had a, a poor hub that i found it slipping quite a bit when i was riding so i wasn't really happy with that that hub expensive to replace and same with the front hub roval brand they couldn't find much info i found this quite a flexi hub when i was riding so with those changes i've made i again changed the bars um i wasn't too keen on the new proof so i went for these retinal um 40 mil rise bars i prefer the sweep on these so this is how the bike should have been how, how it should have come out of the factory um i love the bike i love the fact that it's a big 170 mil enduro bike that you can pedal easily up hills so get through the mundane stuff to then bomb back down the hills, saving your energy um, for the things that are fun. I'm only 13 stone and I find this semi bike, as I call it, is a great bike because it doesn't feel like I'm muscling a big heavy e-bike around the bends. It feels very similar to my Canyon analog bike with being at 5-6 kilos heavier rather than being 10-12 kilos heavier. So I hope this video is of use. The idea of this is just to show that the bike is a great bike. However, it does have a few limitations and flaws that you can address if you so choose to. Um, I'm open to discussion or, or, or any kind of feedback. So please let me know what you thought of the video. And if you've got any questions about the bike, feel free to ask.